Hello everyone. Welcome to our channel. So today we're going to discuss about predicates and quantifiers in discrete mathematics. So um, this is an important topic. So what is a predicate and what is a quantifier? Okay. So if you see the definition over here, a predicate is a function from universe of discourse to truth values. Okay. So if, if we take universe of discourse, um, like, uh, like all, so for all, okay, La, or else uh, there exist like that. So it's from universe of discourse, a predicate is a function for truth values. So for example, if we consider a sentence, X is greater than two. So here is greater than two is the predicate and X is the subject or variable. So greater than two is the predicate. So predicate is a function from the universe of discourse to the proof value. Okay. And what about X? X is a simply a variable or a subject. Okay. So if values are assigned to all the variables, the resulting sentence is a proposition. So uh, you can uh, get this in one mark or two mark question. So they may ask you what is a predicate or what is a proposition. So what is a predicate? A predicate is a function from universe of discourse through truth values. So if we say X is greater than two, greater than two is a predicate and X is a subject or variable. So if values are assigned to all the variables, the resulting, uh, the resulting sentence is a proposition. Okay. For example, if we say X less than nine. So as you said that X is a variable and here we are saying uh, less than nine. So we can call this a, uh, we can call this as a predicate. Okay. So if any value is assigned to the variable, so that's what we're saying. So in the place of X, we are giving four. So four less than nine, that means we have assigned a value uh, 4 to the uh, to x. So now it becomes a proposition. So until unless if we uh, insert any value, it is uh, in the form of a predicate. Once we uh, assign any value to that particular variable, then we call it as a proposition. So now what is propositional function? So propositional function is also called as an open sentence. So a propositional function or an uh, open uh, sentence Defined on A is a predicate together with subjects. So it is denoted by the expression P of X. So what is P of X, which has the property. So P of A is true or false. Here we're saying P of A. So here A belongs to capital A. So what is a capital A? So capital A is uh, in which your property is defined on particular A, that is P of A. Here A belongs to A. Okay, so a propositional function, uh, it is simply is called as an open sentence defined on A is a predicate together with subjects. So how is it denoted P of X, which has a property that P of A where A belongs to capital A. The set A is called domain of P of X and the set TP of all elements of A for which P of A is true is called the truth set of P of X. Okay. So the set A is called domain of P of X. So P of X uh, domain is set A. Then the all elements of the A for which P of A is true is called the truth set of P of X. So as we said that set A is a domain of uh, P of X, then if it is true, then all this, all the elements present in the set will also be true uh, and belong to the, that particular truth set P of X. So propositional functions can be converted to propositions by two aspects. By assigning exact value to the variable, and using quantification. So uh, what value are we going to assign to the particular variable? And next to that, using quantification. So what quantity we should uh, give? So if we see an example, a equal to x, where x is an integer less than eight. Okay. So here uh, we're giving a, a predicate and that too we are uh, dragging the proportional function out of it. So um, uh, predicate is, as you know that if x less than nine is called a predicate. If we assign a value to that particular x, then it becomes a proposition. So that is what we are uh, defining a propositional function here. Okay. So a equal to x, where x is an integer less than eight. Uh, here p of x is a sentence. So what is a sentence? Uh, um, we should write in an English statement like x is an integer less than eight. The common property is an integer less than eight, where x is a variable, which we know. Okay. Next, the common property is an integer less than eight. So P of n is statement one is an integer less than eight. So if we, uh, in the place of X, uh, if it is P of X, we're saying X is an integer less than eight. If we give P of one, 
one is an integer less than eight. If you substitute p of two, two is an integer less than eight. If you substitute p of three, three is an integer less than eight. So where p of one is true, why one is less than eight? True. P of two is true, why two is less than eight? P of nine is false, and p of eight is also false. Why? Because eight less than eight false. Nine less than eight false. Ten less than eight false. So when it will be true? P of zero, P of one, P of two, P of three, P of four, up to P of seven. It will be true. Okay. So next important one is quantifier. Okay. So we'll see what quantifier is. So quantification is the way by which a proportional function can be turns out to be a proposition. Proportional function will convert it as a proposition. The expression for all. There exist are called quantifiers. So here we should mainly focus upon two things. One is propositional logic predicates. A uh, predicate is uh, if you say x less than n, which is called a predicate. And when it is converted to proposition, when we substitute any value in the place of x, like uh, uh, four less than n, it, it is called propositional. So what is propositional function? It, it is in the form of p of x, where x uh, uh, x is an integer less than eight, like that. So when it will be true? By substituting any value out of it, p of one, uh, one less than it, uh, it is true. Next, quantification. So, quantification we simply call it as a quantifier. So, quantification is nothing but when your proportional function is converted, uh, it turns out to be a proportion. Your proportional function will be converted as a proposition. The expression for all there exists are called quantifier. So, what are the quantifiers which we have here? For all and there exists. Okay. The process of applying quantifier to a variable is called uh, quantification of variables. So uh, the method of applying uh, quantifier to any particular variable, for, uh, for example, if we say for all x, there exists x. That means we are applying it to any particular variable. So then it is called quantification of variables. Okay. So here uh, the most important one is um, uni universal quantification. So universal quantification is nothing but for all. The universal quantification of a predicate p of x is a statement for all values of x, p of x is true. That means whatever be the value it is for all the values of x, p of x holds the value true. Okay, so we call it as a predicate p of x. Okay, so why? Because we have not yet substitute any value here. Okay, so until unless we substitute any value, it is called as a predicate. When we substitute a value, it is it is converted to propositional logic. A proposition. Okay. The universal quantification of p of x is denoted by for all. So for all x, p of x. So for every value of x, we can hold p of x. So for all one, p of one. For all two, p of two. For all five, p of five. Like that. The symbol for all is called universal quantifier. The inverted a. The inverted a is called universal quantifier. The sentence p of x. So minus of minus x, x is a predicate that makes sense for real number six. The universal quantification of p of x is given as x p of x is true for all real numbers minus of minus x equal to x. So how we should write in this format? The universal quantification like p of x. Okay, so p of x is called as a predicate, and we should use the inverted a symbol that is for all x p of x is true when it will be true. For all real numbers, which is in the form of minus of minus x, uh, which is uh, nothing but positive x. Okay. So uh, second one, if you see second example, let q of x x plus one less than five. Then for all q of x, that means it should hold every value. So for all q of x x plus two less than five is a false statement. So as q of five is not true, why? Because five plus two is seven. Seven less than five, false. So if we say q of four, four plus two, six, it is false. Okay. Uh, if we give three, three plus two, uh, five, five less than five, false. Okay. So which is not true? Why? Because it is not uh, true for all the values. Okay. Uh, universal quantification can all be stated in English for every x, every x, or for any x. Okay. So in some cases it will be true, in some cases it will be false. So we can see. Uh, Uh, in the second example, it is false. Okay.
So next, existential quantification. So here we have two types of quantifiers. So first is universal quantifiers and second one is existential quantifiers. So existential quantification of a predicate P of X is a statement. There exists a value for X for which P of X is true. There exists a value. It's not for all. There exists some value. Okay. So that means it can't hold every value. There exists a value for X for which P of X is true. So if you see it's inverted uh, mirror image of E. Okay. So which is an inverted E. So uh, there exists X P of X. The symbol uh, inverted E is called existential quantifier. Okay. So the existential quantification of P of X is denoted uh, inverted E X P of X. The symbol E is called the existential quantifier. Uh, let's take an example. X plus one less than four. So how would we read the existential quantifier inverted E X Q of X? Okay. So it's a true statement because Q of true is a true statement. So there exists some value. Uh, it doesn't mean that every value should be true. Okay. So if you take two, two plus one less than four, uh, three less than four, it's true. If you take Q of one, one plus one, two less than four, it's true. If you take Q of three, three plus one, four, four less than four, it is false. So what is our uh, main agenda here? Any one should be true. Um, there exists a value. Okay. So it can be Q of two, it can be Q of three, which is true. Okay. So what is for all? It should be true for in every case. Okay. So the statement uh, inverted E y, y plus 2 equal to Y is false. There is no value of Y for which proportional function Y plus 2 equal to Y produces a true statement. So negation of quantified statement. So uh, we can apply negation to universal quantifiers as well as uh, uh, existential quantifiers. So uh, th this is a symbol for negation. Okay. So there exists X P of X. So the negation of uh, you, uh, negation of existential quantifier is converted to universal quantifiers. If we apply negation for universal quantifiers, it is converted to existential quantifiers. You can see here. Here we applied uh, negation for uh, existential quantifier, it is converted to universal quantifier. Here we applied a negation for universal quantifier, it is converted to negation, sorry, existential quantifier. Okay. So this is true for any proportion P of X. So for example, the negation of, of all men are mortal. There is a man who is not mortal. Okay. Uh, express the statement using quantifiers. Okay. So we'll stop with this example. Later on, uh, we'll see the theory, uh, theory of interference for the predicate calculus. Okay. So first we'll uh, see this uh, small example and we'll stop with this. Express the statement using quantifiers. Every student in your school has a computer or has a friend who has a computer. So, um, how we should break this? Okay. So, every student in your class has a computer. Okay. That means, uh, uh, let us term uh, a student as an X. Okay. So, every student in your school has a computer. Okay. Or has a friend who has a computer. Okay. So, that means X has a computer. X and Y are friends. Okay. R has a friend who has a computer means what? For example, if X, uh, X is studying in some school and he has a computer and there is R has a friend. That means X will have a friend, obviously. So that friend will also have a computer. So then let C of X, uh, we write as X as a computer. Why? Because, uh, so we should write in this format. So here we should stress about computer. So we have a computer starts with C, letter C. So it's better to write in this format, C of X. So C of X is X as a computer. So uh, here we write, we write a function, F of X comma Y. So as we know that X as a computer, it, does, it means that X has a friend Y, both have a computer. So X and Y are friends. So thus we have for all X, Y because why, why are we using universal quantifier here? Here we are saying every student in your school. Okay, not some students. Okay, so every student. So for all X. So every student in a school has a computer C of X or there exists Y. Y can also have a computer. Okay. X can also have a computer or Y can also have a computer. There exists Y or C of Y. 
C of y in the sense, if C of x, x has a computer, C of y means y has a computer. Okay, so y because y is a friend of x, if x has a computer, obviously y will also have a computer. So uh, there exists y, C of y and f of x comma y. Why? Because f of x comma y is nothing but both x and y are friends, right? Okay, so for all x, C of x, C of x means x as a computer or there exists y in which we should write C of y, y because y will also have a computer at the same time and they should be friends. That's the reason we are using and here. Okay. So here we are using or and here we are using and. So in this way we can write in English statement uh, using a quantifier like universal quantifier as well as um, existential quantifier. So we'll stop with this. Uh, later on we'll discuss about uh, theory of interference from the predicate calculus. This will be the most, most important topic. So uh, the students who are watching my channel for the first time, I request you to please subscribe my channel. Please share my videos to your friends and well wishes. And please support my channel in all possible ways. Thank you. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.